Hi, I'm Libby, and I love wine, and dear God, I wish I had some right now. Um, as you can see, I'm super classy about it. Um, sometimes I get so excited, I just make myself an adult juice box. Um, so how did I end up this way? How does any passion start, really? And for me, I can pinpoint it to four major events in my life. Two had to do with wines, and two had to do with people. Ask anyone who loves wine, and there's always a, a place that it started, and there's usually a bottle behind that story. And for me, it was this bottle of Papa Pietro Perry. It's an Anderson Valley Pinot Noir, and it was the first time that I ever had a wine that just made me stop in my tracks and say, I need to learn more about this stuff. And uh, the next time that happened was a few years later when I had a bottle of Dos Cabezas Toscano wine. And I was blown away loving all things local by the caliber of this wine and the fact that it was made right here in our state. So I said, I need to meet the people behind this. And so that's when I met these three people. You may know one of, one of these guys, Pavle Milic. He's a uh, Pied Piper of Arizona wine and Todd and Kelly Bostock of Dos Cabezas Wine Works who in my opinion, make some of the best wine, not only in the state, but in the world. So, I sat down with Todd one day and had a glass of wine, and I said, Todd, I'd really love to learn more about this. And he said, okay, you need to meet Heidi Stein. She's the executive director of a wine education organization. So, I had a blind date of sorts with Heidi, and I sat down and I said, hey, um, so I've been reading a lot, and I'm taking an online course, and I just feel like, it's not all meshing for me. What, what do you suggest? And she said, you need to get your hands dirty. Get out there and volunteer. And so I contacted Todd and said, hey, do you feel like you could use a couple of volunteers for your next harvest? And I said, my partner Lindsay and I would love to come out. And he said, we can use all the help we can get. And I got such a greater appreciation for all the work that goes into what you enjoy in that glass. So what I learned about wine people is that they're some of the hardest working people you'll ever meet. Um, during harvest time, they work 16 plus hour days and they rarely get a day off. It's amazing that Todd is here tonight. Um, so what I, what I found out is that Todd is, is somewhat of a low talker and he moves very fast. So you have to keep up with him because if you don't, you're gonna lose vital information like how you could lose all the wine. Um, so the first task that we were given was stirring the barrel. And um, Todd's like, I want you to really get in there. It's a vigorous task, and it's, it's very backbreaking. And once we got in there, he's like, all right, the wine is going to start frothing to the top. Don't freak out when you're starting to pull out the pendulum, because you got to shove the bung in. So our mantra for the weekend became, slap that bung. Um, <laughs> Because you have to slap it, and then you have to remember to go back and loosen it, because if you don't, all of the, the wine could blow out of the barrel. So I didn't want to be responsible for that. Um, so the next thing he said, hey, do you guys want to taste some wine? I'm like, um, yeah. And I had a very different interpretation of what that meant. Um, so basically, he needed a taster and a runner. And he wanted us to kind of suck the wine out of the barrels through this thief into this plastic container and run it to him so that he could test the fermentation and the sugars and the pH levels. And, First five barrels were awesome. By the 40th or 50th, I'm like, okay, I've got a healthy buzz. Um, that was okay. Then we did punch downs, and what I realized during punch downs is that it takes a lot of balance, and I'm thankful that I was a gymnast um, because I almost fell in here like three or four times. And what happens is the, the grape skins start to form a cap at the top of the fermentation tank, and you have to punch down through that because the skins have to have contact with the juice while it's fermenting, because that's what makes it really tasty. And so what I realized from all of this work is that I, I love learning this way. This is the only way to learn. If you really want to get to know something, read the books, but put those away and get out there and talk to the people that you really idolize and, and learn from them, because there's a lot of benefits that come with that. Um, I have two very great passions in life. One is wine, of course, and I love dogs. And this is, this is Chloe the resident dog at Dos Cabezas, and she's pretty awesome, and she's also an awesome cuddler. I stayed the night, and we bonded. Um, what else goes with great wine is great food, and this was an amazing sandwich that Todd and Kelly made for me, and they shared some wines from their own cellar, which was awesome. Um, but I have one request. If you love Arizona wine as much as me, and if you haven't had it, get out there and try it. But if you go to an Arizona restaurant, and you don't see an Arizona wine on the wine menu, ask them why not. This wine is too good for us not to support it. So next time you dine out, ask them. Thank you.